Okay, this is the chapter 8.1 confidence interval basics video. Um, here we, um, we're talking about how in the pre previous chapter, we oftentimes assumed we knew what the standard deviation of the population was. In reality, we often don't. Uh, so we're going to be kind of keeping that in mind as we move forward. But think about what a confidence interval is, what a confidence level is, and what the difference in the two are. Um, so the level has to do with uh, the area under the normal curve whereas the interval actually refers to the data we calculated and where we feel the true parameter falls in between. So let's get to some vocabulary and what's going on with this, and then I'll take a look at what a confidence interval is. So we have point estimer, estimator and point estimate, uh, a statistic that we, um, we're trying to estimate the actual parameter with. The value of the st statistic is the point estimate, and then the estimator would be however, whether we're using the mean or whatever we're using to come up with the point estimate. Um, so in a confidence interval, each statistic is an estimate, and then we include a margin of error, like plus or minus. Like we think that 70% of people um, enjoy going to the park on the weekends, plus or minus 5%. That would give us a range of 65 to 75% for that proportion. So they're different in the sense that an interval covers a range of values. The point estimate would be that the value in the middle there. So if we said 70% plus or minus 5, point estimate would be 70%. The confidence interval would be 65 to 75%. So let's first uh, look at confidence level and interval, what they mean, and then we'll take a look at some visuals. So our level of confidence, we're going to use 95% quite often. It means that 95% of all possible samples of a given size will result in an interval that captures the unknown parameter. So we're saying that 95% of the time, our true value will fall within that interval. And that has a lot to do with the normal curve and what represents 95% under there. Um, so we're going to be keeping that in mind as we go forward. Um, so to interpret confidence interval, we use the level. We'd say um, we're whatever confidence level percent confident that the interval from blank to blank, in our previous example, 65 to 75%, captures the actual value of the percent of people who enjoy going to the park, if that's our example. So that means if we took repeated samples 95% of the time, the value would fall in between 65% and 75% of the time. Think about the other 5% as the left of the, ta uh, the left of the normal curve and the right of the normal curve. So 2.5% of the time, we'd be saying that our value could be less than uh, that interval, and 2.5%, it could be more than that interval. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look at what we're so here is our population true mean. We have a 95% confidence level we're going to set up. We're going to go to sample 50. And what we see here is the red line represents when we did not capture the true mean. We can see that sometimes we're right on, like this first, this first sample. Sometimes we miss it, but we still include it in the interval. So the point estimate is quite close here. Oftentimes it's off, but only one time does it not capture it here. So 98% of the time, and this time we hit it. Um, and that just has to do with chance as well. Um, and so what we're doing is we're really referring to the area of the normal curve. So 95% of the time, we capture this value here. But sometimes our point estimate's way up here in the tail, you can see. And so our margin of error doesn't cover what we're talking about. This is the general idea of a confidence interval. These, each line being a sample, uh, and this being our true population. So what we're going to use is um, the critical value, the z-score. So for 95%, it's 1.96. So we would have our point estimate plus or minus 1.96 times whatever the standard deviation is. And that will give us a nice 95% um, of the normal curve covered. So remember, the top 2.5% and the bottom 2.5% wouldn't be covered. Um, so keep those things in mind as we go forward. We're talking about our point estimate plus or minus and then we use the z-score because we want to do it plus or minus two standard deviations from our point estimate because that would cover 95% of the curve or of the values according to the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. So conditions to check. First, it needs to be random. Data should be a well-designed sample. All that stuff we talked about at the beginning of the year um, to avoid bias. And you need to be sampling from using an SRS and random assignment for cause and effect. It needs to be normal. So we use normal conditions in order to determine these. So we have to have, an, uh, for an approximation of the sampling distribution, we need to use everything we've learned about z-scores to know that normal conditions are met and that um, we can use 
we're using everything we know about normal curves in order to develop this. So the normal condition has to be met for us to, for us to develop a confidence interval. So keep in mind the normal condition for proportions and the normal condition for the central limit theorem for sample means. So uh, for proportions, NP is greater than or equal to 10, and N times the quantity 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. And for means, the, we need a sample size 30 or bigger. Independent. So calculating confidence intervals, we need to know that individual observations are independent. So um, this is also ha has to do with the 10% condition. Remember, we can't sample bigger than 10% of the population, otherwise we lose independence. So the 10% condition's in there. Uh, remember other things we talked about, independence, one outcome not affecting another outcome. So those things are all required, random, normal, and independent, and should be checked for before pursu pursuing any more calculations. So keep in mind that our confidence interval, our level represents how, what percent of the time a sample would capture the true interval, or our estimator would capture the true interval. So, um, and that has to do with the area under the normal curve. And then our point estimate is that number in the middle and th that we use, and then our, our interval represents uh, our greatest value and smallest value that we think will capture it 95% of the time. So here's our multiple choice. A recent poll suggests Obama's approval rating is 0.65 plus or minus 0.05, or 65% plus or minus 5% with 95% confidence. So please tell me which one of those represents the point estimate, the confidence interval, and then uh, the percent of the time that the normal curve is, will be centered around that point estimate. So here are all the values. Give you a second to look over that. Feel free to go back. And then also please read Chapter 8, Lesson 1 and especially look at the uh, examples there to get a good sense of what confidence intervals are and they relate to the normal conditions. So go ahead and hit pause if you want to keep looking at the multiple choice more now and then go on to the conceptual question. 